what's going on y'all welcome to another video today we're doing a market analysis on exactly what's been going on and what levels i'm looking at for entries for breakouts uh to take profit looking at some supports and resistance and just uh some ideas and opinions i have you know with uh with uh whatever questions uh some of you guys were asking so i hope you guys enjoy this video let's make this money let's get this peace we're gonna do the giveaway for this video because we have not done it yet so we got 30 likes on the video and 23 comments now we asked for over 30 likes but we'll, we'll let it slide this time let's go ahead and, and do the giveaway i already put in the link over here so the giveaway whoever the winner is gets a free month in our trading room which is 70 dollars to get in Let's see who the winner is. Good luck. The winner is Axel Bree. Axel Bree. Please send us a DM. We will get you set up. You got the right answer. Dollar cost averaging. That was uh, the question was the, what's the best way to invest in, in Bitcoin? The answer is dollar cost averaging. So Axel, congrats, my boy. Make sure to send us a DM either on YouTube or on IG at Bitcoin Daily and claim your free month in the trade room. Appreciate you, man. All right, y'all. So let's check this out, man. It has been a pretty slow few days. Um, I think last time we streamed was last Tuesday, I believe. Uh, I think after that, Bitcoin took a dip below 12K. I think it was around 12K when we last uh, streamed. I think actually the same day that we streamed that night, it dropped under 12,000. It dipped to about 11,400-ish, maybe 11,003. I'm not sure exactly where. Um... But uh, we did buy some at the 11.4 support, uh, and we we wrote it up to 11,800. So that's currently the position we're in. We also entered Ethereum at 390. It's currently at 406. I think it did go to all the way to 410ish. Um, are we in any other trades? We are. Oh yeah, we are in a in the chain link trade. I don't know if you guys remember our last stream. We were speaking about the levels for chain link, where we would like to enter. It was between 13 and 14 dollars. That was actually uh, the question of the day on that video. Um, if you guys were paying attention, chain link hit that entry, 13 or 14 dollars. Uh, we entered it, so that's a trade that that we entered and we're currently in and it's currently at $15 so we're already up on that I think it touched 16 which is our 16 is our first target I think it touched I'm not sure what we'll look at it today. guys so let's look we're still looking at the same levels that we talked about you see these levels right here where it's struggling if you look back this is literally a year ago last year we're in the same spot we had the same issues in the same levels so that that's the main thing that we're looking at right now we need to break through this you see how these wicks are just going up and getting rejected right back down look at the same thing here happened last year got rejected 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 went down tried to go back up rejected went down that's when that's when it went all the way down to 7,000 try to go hit 10k again and then uh, when it hit 10k that's when the whole pandemic started and yeah we went all the way down to what was the low here the low was 3596 man i remember at 3596 i couldn't buy at that price because it moved way too fast but at 4000 i told everybody to buy i was like guys this is your opportunity anyone who was saying that they missed out on it that they didn't get to buy you know at a good price this is the opportunity to buy and a lot of people didn't want to listen to me um so i mean i definitely bought and have basically tripled my money since then um but yeah if you bought at four thousand you would have tripled your money over here so at 12k is a it's a 
what it, what is it? Two hundred percent, three hundred percent profit, something like that. Um, but we're so we're stuck right here in this range, man. We need to get over this. If not, if we don't get over this and we keep getting rejected, and we break past eleven thousand, we're definitely dropping to ten. If ten can't hold right here. You see this this area right here so this is definitely a support is a strong support if 10 can't hold we're dropping to nine and then we're gonna hope that nine can support us if nine doesn't support then we're just gonna keep dropping um, I don't think we will drop that far but that's just so that you guys have an idea of what could happen if we can't break through 12 um, that's definitely a possibility there. So we have to we have to be you have to watch it You know, just make sure you're using stop losses and all of that uh, So that you don't you know get caught with your pants down if you know what I mean so oh uh, Now that we talked about Bitcoin in the on the weekly Let's fall let's, let's zoom in a little bit And as you can see, we're still good on this bull flag. Bull flag is still there. We're still good there. Remember what happened down here? We had a very, very similar thing where we took off, we consolidated for a while, and then we took off. So we've taken off, we're consolidating. Now the thing is the range is, is pretty wide. You have about a thousand dollar range. Um, it is if you notice it was very very wide then it got a little bit tighter then it popped over here it's a little bit tighter so if it keeps getting tighter and tighter and tighter um, then I'm definitely seeing another, another pop like this one look look at this one how wide it was wide and then it as it went on it kept getting tighter 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 look at this right here how long was this from basically starting back here this was June 25th all the way to July 20th so almost a month of no movement whatsoever just very very small moves very very tight and then it popped so we can definitely see something very very similar to what happened here over here because the moves are getting tighter and tighter and tighter we're, we're still trying to get through but the moves the movements getting tighter so that, that's a that's a bullish thing that's a good thing to see here that when it gets the tighter it gets that means that the market's getting ready for a, a impulsive move and an impulse move so either a big pop like this how we saw here and I mean it could go either way but because of the pattern the overall pattern that we're looking at here uh, this is a bullish pattern so the probability is, is to the upside so we're playing the upside on this because that's where our uh, edge lies. That's where our probability lies. You always want to play the high probability setup and a high probability trade. So check it out. So let's jump into the four hour. See if there's anything different here. So we're basically seeing the same thing here. Very, very wide range here. You can see this. This actually dropped all the way to what 10,560 and the top of the range was 12,163 so that's a very wide range right there but that's the range so you got to make sure to be careful when you're playing these if you're day trading this if you're just uh, holding long term then you don't it doesn't really matter all this nonsense doesn't matter what matters to you is what's going on in the big picture so does when I zoom in like this to you know four hours or anything less this is more intended for anyone trying to day trade it like what I do is I day trade it so for example when it when it comes up here when I see it getting rejected I'm selling then when I see it bouncing like this I'm buying it back up boom I'm writing it up and I'll write I'll write through all these little ups and downs and I'm taking profit this whole time. So like all these red lines, these are just to remind me to take profit there. So for example, here I took profit, then it went down. If it hits this yellow line again, like it did right there, I'm buying again. So boom, bought again. When it when it hit this, I'm taking profit. When it hit this, I'm taking profit. When it, it started going down, 
I'm buying again. Now, now once they go over the my my markers, and it hits them again, I'm buying there. Those turn into buy areas. So I'm buying, buying. Goes up, goes up. I'm selling. And you just keep doing the same thing. See, when it came down here, buying. Just writing that up. Look how far up. So I'm taking profit. When I, I bought here, I'm taking profit, taking profit, taking profit. Then as it came down here, I bought, but I have a stop loss. Remember, you always got to have a stop loss. So as soon as it went under that, I'm selling. Because I don't want I don't want any of this down here. I want to get out of there. And I want to look for a better area to buy. So when it dropped here, it dropped look, back to my marker. I'm buying again. And now I'm writing it up right here. So if I see it start dropping again, then I'm, I'm selling because I want to get out of the position. And I, and I zoom in more. If you zoom in more, then I'll have other targets that I that I don't have marked here. Like, for example, this area right here, uh, 11,800. I'm taking profit there. So, yeah, man, that's pretty much it on Bitcoin. I think we pretty much covered it from the weekly, the daily, and the four-hour. Anything else is just for scalping. Um, you guys have any questions on Bitcoin? Because I think we're good here. Uh... Let me tell you the levels I'm looking at for entry and exits. Um, so if I'm looking to enter in this range, I'm not really looking to enter where it's currently at because my entry was 11,400. So my entry was down here, 11,400. That was my entry. This is another entry. So 11,400 11, is the entry I've been using here and here and here. Um, so that was the entry. My take profits here were 11,600, which is around here, this range right here, and 11,800, which is here. So we hit both of those already. My next uh, take profit mark is 12,000. Um, so if I'm looking to enter, I need either a dip back down to 11,400. You could buy at 11,005 between 500 to 600. It is viable, but you need to have the thing if you if you buy there, you need to have your stops under 11,400. If not, you'll probably get stopped out. Um, so the stop, uh, your risk has to be a lot wider. So that's why it's a that's a riskier play if that's what you're looking to do. Um, so the only other entry. It's tough, but it has to be a breakout entry and it has to be above 12,000, not only above 12,000, but it has to be above like 12,100 because it's been hitting it that 12,000 mark so many times and just stopping out. It just keeps hitting, stopping, hitting, stopping. Hitting. So I, if you want to be safe, you have to enter above 12,100. And then your targets are probably going to be like 12,200 um, and up here 400, 12,400. And the next entry would be above this high. So above 12,500 would be the next breakout entry. But I like, I like to, I mostly trade with leverage and I'm the type of trader that I, I like to focus only on a few set of coins. Uh, I know most people, especially when they get started, they just go down the rabbit hole of altcoins and they invest in like 50 different altcoins. And like you can't, it's it's impossible to learn the pattern of so many different coins. You have to, you have to stick to a set number of coins and just trade those and you'll be very profitable. It's like you have to specialize in a, in a certain coin. Um, I do the same thing with the stock market. I only like to trade blue chip, blue chip stocks and um, and any companies I really believe in. Um, and you, but I only trade. You know, I started with five. Then once I get really good at those five, then I, I add another five. Um, and I that's what I do. And I max my my trading range at around 20 different options. Um, I feel like if I can just learn these 20 coins or 20 stocks really really good. I'm going to make more money than someone who's just playing the lottery, basically investing in 50 different coins. So um, just learn, just pick like a handful, start with five, learn how to trade those really, really good. Learn all the levels, learn the supports, the resistance, uh, learn the patterns, how it moves. 
and then um, you'll you'll be very profitable if you learn how to do that. And then from there, once you get that, then you could add on another five coins and and so forth, you know, and just and you know put a limit to how many coins you're trading because it's impossible to watch 50 different coins. Like it's just impossible to do. So my main thing that I trade is Bitcoin. Um, I trade Bitcoin. I use leverage when trading Bitcoin so that I, I get a bit more volatility in it. Um, and um, and then I trade a few a few other of the top coins. I don't I don't go off to you know too much to the to the left too much in, to the deep end. You know I don't like to uh, to play the lottery too much. Uh, let's see. So yeah, I use Binance, BitMEX, and Bybit. I also, the way I buy with fiat to, to crypto is using either Coinbase or Gemini. Next thing you wanna focus on when you're starting out is how you're diversifying and building your portfolio. Um, your, so your crypto portfolio, so the main, the main coin in crypto is um, Bitcoin, right? And that's kind of the benchmark for every other coin. So anytime you look at any other coin, it's either it's one, it's following crypt, uh, Bitcoin. So depending what crypto does is what every other coin is going to do. And um, and two, it's what, you know, you compare every every other coin to. So what I always suggest uh, to people, I treat Bitcoin like the S&P 500. If you don't know what the S&P 500 is, is basically a, a index fund of the top 500 companies in the stock market. Um, so I, any starter, when you're first going in, I always suggest putting at least 50% of your portfolio in something like the S&P 500. It doesn't have to be that, but it, ha it could it has to be something like that. Um, Cause it's the main thing that drives everything else. So I recommend doing the same with crypto. Keep at least 50%. It doesn't have to be 50, but that's just um, a starting point for you. And then you can move that around between 30% to 50% of your portfolio should be in Bitcoin. Cause that's, that should be the foundation of your portfolio. And then, uh, then you could use like, you know, 30% for altcoins, uh, 10% for day trading if you want to be going in and out and then like another 10% for uh, having in cash you always want to have cash you always need to have cash in hand so when there's a dip you want to be able to buy it all right so the, the whole idea with with Bitcoin and crypto is to get more Bitcoin the more Bitcoin you have the better so you have to have cash in order to jump back into Bitcoin and and make that you know make more Bitcoin overall all right, guys, so let's look at Ethereum. Now, if you guys watched our previous video, then you know that the way we like to start is to zoom out. It's called the top down analysis. Here we go. So we're currently at the 400 level right now. If you zoom out, you guys can see the potential of Ethereum. Look at this. The high was $1,419. $1,419. Any of you guys uh, have Ethereum back then? The first time I ever bought Ethereum was like down here somewhere. Around $100. This is what, 2017-ish? Yeah. So 1400 was the high. Right now it's at $400. That means that you can what? Double? You can triple your money. This is another Bitcoin. You can triple your money, but it's not gonna happen overnight. So chill out. <laughs> so going back real quick, just taking a look, you can see this 400 area was a support here it was a support here during the breakout so check this out we broke out we broke out through we got rejected at 400 right here this is what august 2017 we dropped down we dropped down to two 200 then we jumped back up and this time we broke 400 so that was in november after we broke it we tested 400 again 
and then we continued up. So I took one, two, three, four. Here we tested 400, we jumped, we tested again, went up, but then eventually dropped down. Um, so 400 is a very, very big level for Ethereum. Look how many times I tested it here. One, and then it dropped. Two, three, four, and then finally. Right now we're at one, two, three, four, and we're, we're battling. We, we just tested it one time right here. We're battling to get through that 400 level. Um, if we go through, four, if we do get through 400, 420, 420 is, an, is the first target, then 440 and 450, then 500 pretty much. I have to zoom in more to see um, a little bit deeper, but that's around the range that we're looking at. If we zoom into the daily, you see, you see how how much it's respecting that 400 number. It's a very big um, support and resistance zone. Um, Binance and YouTube, RD2, uh, RD, R2D2 and YouTube. There's a lot of uh, tutorials. Look up uh, Binance tutorial. Um, all right, so here we're looking at the 400 level. If you can see 420, 440, and it got scared of 450. So remember, remember if you guys have, have been here before, you know I love playing the whole numbers. Because uh, the market always reacts to whole numbers. So 400, huge whole number. It's a psychological support. It's a psychological resistance. People just like whole numbers. It's a psychological thing. You got you guys have to learn the psychological aspects of the market because they play a very big role when trading. Um, so 400, big level, and then the other level was look like four, 440, another whole number. 450 another whole number people just love psychological th those psychological whole numbers so you just have to make sure you're taking profit right before those numbers hold on let me change that song real quick no problem r2d2 if you guys are in here make sure to join the chat let us know if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer it. Um, and uh, give us a follow. We're trying to get these follows, man. We need 50. We're at 37. Let me see. Let me update it real quick. See if we got any more. Nope, we're at 37, guys. Come on. Let's get it. Let's get it, y'all. So, all right. So, in Ethereum, guys, I am long-term on Ethereum. So, if you're not in Ethereum, I do suggest getting in it. If you look at the pattern, it is a bull flag. All right, so it's a bull flag from this angle. It's almost like a bull flag from this one, but either way, it's a bull flag. All right. Um, the levels I'm looking at to enter is $400. For, like we said, 400 is psychological support level. So you want to enter as close to 400 as possible. In the market, everybody always asking me for exact numbers. Guys, the truth is there's no exact numbers in trading. There's only zones, there's areas. There's no no such thing as an exact number, all right? So you have to get used to that. 402 is a fine price to enter if you want. Um, but you know, the closer to 400, the better. So 402 is not bad. Um, if it drops under 400, 380, it, well, you have a minor support at 390. Then the, the bigger supports at 380 and then you have a drop off basically to like the 350 range probably um but 380 is a, the main support here as you guys can see look how how the price has respected it even though it's wicked down you, you know further 
it still has always closed within this price. So if you're entering at 400, your stop has to be under 400. Um, give yourself some room, depending on your risk tolerance. Your first, your first target is probably 410. You're, you're looking at 410 and 420 as your two targets before going to 440. Um, so if, if $10 is your first target, you want to give yourself a two to one uh, risk reward ratio. So if you're risking one, you want to be rewarded at least two, right? So if, if your reward is $10, your risk should be $5. Um, so if you're entering at 400, then your stop should be around 395. Does that make sense, guys? Risk, re it's trading. If you want to be profitable, you need to learn and know how to calculate your risk reward ratio because it is very, very important. If you're taking trades that don't make sense as far as risk, if you're taking more risk than reward, then when you're talking about long term, you're you're not going to be successful because your losses are going to be too big and your your winners aren't going to be are going to be too small. So that's pretty much it on Ethereum. I'll, I'll zoom into the four hours, but the four once you get under daily, uh, it's mostly for scalping if you're looking for day trades. So this is I go into four hours and below when I'm I'm looking for day trades. So as you can see here, 380. That's the level we spoke about. Look at it right there. Look at it right here. Right here. Right here. Like. There's the market is literally telling you the zones, you know, like the areas where it has trouble at where there's either buyers or sellers. There's always either right here. There were sellers and then right here. There were also buyers. There were buyers. There were buyers right here. Buyers. So if it's dropping to 380, you should have orders set already to enter there. So 400 stop out below 400. 380 is your next entry. You enter there, you can write it up back up to 400. And you could have, uh, let me see what this low is. I would keep the stop around, you keep it around 375 ish. So you're risking $5 for $20. So see, that's a good risk reward ratio. And then here, look, see how I'm telling you uh, 410 is your first target. This is why, look how it's struggling right here. So 410, you want to take profits. And then look, four, look at 420. Look at this right here. So 420, look, 420, 420, 420. So you want to take profits there. And then it, basically every whole number after that, 430, 440, 450. <laughs> Those are all areas of interest. So you want to you want to be paying attention to all the whole numbers. All right, let's take a look at uh, Bitcoin Cash. Let's zoom out. Look how crazy this this uh, chart is. Like this is just like a straight drop. The high here was uh, 4290. I think that high was uh, the day it got listed. So this high 4290, that was the day it got listed on Coinbase. Yeah, look, yeah, cause it's Coinbase. So it went to 4290 that day. I remember that day was my Christmas party for, I was, I, I worked in real estate. I was a real estate agent and my Christmas party, um, I was at my Christmas party and then news came out so the whole Christmas party, I was literally on my phone, like trying to sell my positions because I had positions in it. So I was trying to sell my positions and uh, Coinbase went down and I couldn't sell anything. And I ended up selling it at around probably like 2000, I think something like that. But it, I couldn't sell at 4000. It didn't let me. I was very upset about it. See, look, I, I ended up selling around the 2500 range probably. Very sad day when I couldn't sell. I was very upset at that Christmas party. <laughs> All right, but let's zoom in. 
Now you see what the potential could be. I think it could get to a thousand. The high of last year was up here $500, the $500 range. Big whole number, big surprise. Look how low this thing went. That's crazy, $80. The high here, look at the high again, 500, same thing. This was when? This was earlier this year. We hit 500 again, dropped down. So I see this going at least to 500 again. And then that's gonna be a big test right there. We're currently struggling right here. You see this, this right here, it struggled in the same area before. Struggling there again. So once we get past, we need to get past this so that we can go up to continue up to 400. Um, good levels to enter here is probably going to be 280. I like 280 for entry. You need about a $10 stop probably. Um, if you're entering 280, your target's going to be 300. Your first target's 300. So you have a $20 twenty dollar reward ten dollar risk so that's a that's a good trade Let's zoom in to the daily you can see here we do have a bull flag but it's it's pretty wide so you have to be careful trading this because it's still pretty wide it it has the last few days has calmed down a bit but it's it's a little wide so be careful um if you're looking for a breakout trade because you can't really 288 it's a little too high already so you can be looking at around 290 ish is a risky breakout trade um 300 is a little bit safer because you could but if you if you look 300 it's been just bouncing around there but you can use 300 as a breakout with a stop below it 310 and 320 are your two targets. So five dollar, use a five dollar stop, so you can have a proper risk reward. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the question of the day. Remember, we do this on every video. We give away a free membership. So let's get right into it. Question of the day. Every video will have a random question. Uh, the question will always be in a random area of the video. Find a question, then find the an answer. Post your answer in the comments for a chance to win. Winners will be picked ran randomly once the uh, video receives at least over 35 likes for this one. Uh, good luck, guys. Remember to uh, post your answer in the comments, like the video, subscribe to the to the page. That's it. Peace. All right, let's look at uh, Ripple, guys. XRP. It's just kind of been chilling. It's kind of been in this zone right here. Not really much going on. Let me move this. But it is a bull flag. If you're entering, probably look at 2400 to enter. So I'm looking at a 2400 area, as close to 2400 as possible. Um, and 2450 is a target, 2500 is the next target, probably 2550 is a target, 2600, so just all those whole numbers, basically going 50 to 50. This is if you're trading it uh, against Bitcoin, if you're trading it against USD chart looks exactly the same except here you're gonna be looking to enter around 28 cents you wanna you wanna enter at 28 cents 30 cents is gonna be your first target whole number well, actually 29 it's, it's had a little bit of trouble at 29 not really that much if you want to be safe you could take profit at 29 but uh, 30 is the main number. 31, 32, you know, every cent, take a little bit off. 
then you could use a breakout above whatever the high is so above 33 cents would be a breakout entry you could buy again there so the strategy would be to take profit on the way to 33 cents by the time you're at 33 cents you only want to have 25 percent of your position left and then as soon as it breaks 33 cents you want to enter again that is at least what i'll do um if you're just holding long term then you can just hold you got you don't gotta worry about that whole mess i just said it's a bull flag so long term looks good um let's look at litecoin i know somebody asked about litecoin we're gonna check it out let's zoom out to the weekly it's finally been getting some life. Let's look at it against uh, USD. So the USD looks better than the Bitcoin against Bitcoin um, so 64 you can see it right here and here again so it's definitely an area where people are taking profit there's profit taking going on here and then above let me see the high has been what 69 another whole number um if i'm looking to enter i don't really i don't there's no real patterns going on here if i'm looking to enter um i'm looking to either i'm waiting for a pullback which is not very likely to like 60. we're 60 60s here so 60 is just risky i wouldn't enter it because look how wide this drop is right here to like 50. so 50 would be maybe a level i'd look at if it dropped that low but it doesn't look like it's gonna drop that low um or i, I look for a breakout above 70 is what i would prefer so if i'm trading this i'm trading above 70. uh breakout and i'm looking to sell around 78 and 80. Between 78 and $80 is where I'm looking to sell. Let's take a look at ADA. Same basic thing here. Long term, we have a bull flag. Looks like this level 1500 Sat Satoshis is where it got rejected. Um, the support is 1000 so I think I spoke about this last stream last stream we we're talking about about this and I said how people are taking profit up here at 14 and 15 and I wouldn't enter unless it got down to a thousand so it's almost there I'm not entering this unless it gets down to a thousand that's my basically my entry point for that and I'll have a stop below it. So it's a pretty good trade though. If you can if you can get enter anywhere near a thousand, right now it's at 1044, so that's pretty close. That's already in the range of where I what where, where I'd enter. So if I'm looking to enter this and I really want to enter it, I would start entering here. 1044. Then I have another entry like a thousand twenty. And another one at a thousand. And then I have a stop underneath somewhere. Um because uh your target your target's gonna be 1100 so that's already 60 away from where you're at um, 1200 1300 and 1400 15 yeah so I mean it has a pretty good reward it, this is this is a pretty good trade to enter at a thousand as close to a thousand as possible so see like you don't have to enter look for new coins or uh, new the new Bitcoin you could just look for 
profitable opportunities where you can enter so if you look at this look how it bounced here boom it bounced from a thousand to third to about 1400 so that's that's a pretty good profit there then I went back down it tested the same area and it bounced from here to the same area to 1400 again went back down and it bounced all the way up to what 2000 probably close to 2000 so that's a that's a hundred percent profit there so if it did it here it could definitely do it here again so one thought as close as possible to a thousand satoshis is a good entry let's see it against USD You have a bull flag. It's basically the same thing. Here you're looking to enter it as close to 12 cents as possible. So 12 cents is where you want to enter. You want to have a stop at around 11 cents and a half. Um, and your target is gonna be every every one cent. So 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So you could definitely enter here at 12 cents and make a, a nice profit. Yeah. Long term, we're talking about, you know, it was all the way to 35 cents. All the way to a dollar so there's a lot of potential here this cardano Let's take a look at link look at this big red candle See how there's not that much history to go off of. So this is, since it's a new coin, there's not there's not enough to really go off of. You know, like right here, like we're just up in the air right now. We don't know where this is going because history doesn't tell us anything. So we just have to look at immediate history, which is usually not as. Um, not as good as you know information but uh we talked about these levels last week i told you guys around 13 to 14 and look, look where it went it dropped to 13 exactly 13 look at this so i know we we got in around 14 ish but it did drop all the way to 13, which is exactly where we told you guys to enter. We told you guys not to enter up here. We spoke about this. So that was just a perfect call. Hopefully you guys entered. Did any, anybody get in on that trade? Look at Tezos. For some reason, uh, YouTube loves Tezo, so we're gonna be looking at Tezos as well. All right, I need some water. I ran out of water. All right, so we're at 13.62 right now. This was the same thing. We told you guys not to enter up here. It was too high already. He's got to wait for a pullback. Um, I think we told you guys we're on this level. I don't remember exactly where we told you guys last time, but 3.30 was definitely an entry. And that's exactly where it went down to. Look at it, 3:30 right here. 
3.30 right here, 3.30 right there. Three thirty. So history, see how history told us a lot about that number. When a number keeps popping up like that in a chart, that's a number you gotta pay attention to. So three thirty is the entry. If you're looking right now, it's at three sixty two. If you're looking to enter, enter three thirty ish is your entry. Um, other than that, I wouldn't really enter anywhere here. Maybe if you want to try a breakout entry above around four dollars, that's riskier. Um, but viable. It does have somewhat of a bull flag form, but it might be invalid with this big drop here. We we'll have to we we'll have to let it consolidate a bit more if it can keep consolidating in this range then it, it'll be a higher probability uh, trade and we're also currently at the 50 day moving average oh wait there's a 20 I think yeah there's a 20 day moving average 50 is this one right under so if you enter at 330 you're looking to sell around four dollars close to four dollars as possible your next target is going to be around 420 ish your next target we're talking about 450 those are your three targets your stop has to be around uh see that's why i, I want to enter at 330 so i can have a stop under 320. if you enter here that's a wide stop So I don't recommend entering here. I need a pullback or a breakout. Ugger. Let's see what we got here. So I'm already looking at this level. Let me go see what else. Alright. So this is definitely an area. See, it's, look at all this, this wide range right here, and then it's kind of basically doing the same thing here, very wide range, um, so we're talking about a low of about $17, and a high of $30, so that's a, it's a pretty big range, um, If I'm entering this, so it's, let's see down here. Let's see where it went down to after last time I hit this area. Drop down to $8. So we're in the eight, 7 to $8 range. Went up to 20 Dropped back down. This one dropped way down. This was in March. Okay, everything dropped in March. So dropped to 5 And it's just been up since then. So anybody who bought down here, at five, Why don't you just come on over? Why don't you just has made five times their money at twenty-five. So they bought the if they bought at five. They're definitely selling at twenty-five. That's five times their money. Um, but the most likely spot is eight dollars here. So. So check out this big support right here, right? So I'm always telling you like to pay attention to where where professionals are, are buying, where that support is. So $8 is where a lot of people probably entered. And then the rejection was at, let me see. This, one's for every beautiful head. this first rejection here was at $16. So that's already 100% profit if you entered at 8, 16. Then it finally got over, but then it got dropped right back down. People probably bought around 8 again. 
So 16, it went over it, but then it dropped right back down. These are 100% profit takers. Dropped it back to 16. People bought it back at 16. this over here the high is 26 and the high is 30 maybe change the song it's like saying weird stuff all right so and then we're currently at 23 so I mean the target here well if I'm entering if I wanted to enter this trade right now Let's zoom in. So when creating your plan, you always want to find out where you would enter, right? You want to know where your entry is going to be. That's the first step. So I'm entering at $20. Look at this. Strong support. $20, a good range. Um, and this looks like a, a another a minor, another support right here, So which is $23. So $23 is the first support, $20 is probably the next one. It looks like 21 has some support. Each whole number has some support. So these, I'll, I would say these are minor supports. Uh, so 23, 22, 21, all kind of minor. The main one you really want to get into is 20. And even then, so at 20, if you enter at 20, you're still looking at about a $3 risk. Because you want to make sure you're not going to get wicked out. It's already gone down here twice. It could do it a third time. Um, or you can, if you want to play it safer, you don't want to have a risk, you don't want to risk that much, you could do under 1850, which is a dollar and a half risk. Or if you want to be even safer, you could just play below these. So. $19 so that's a $1 risk if you're entering at 20 with a $1 risk um, you're looking to hit at least 22 so that's a 2 to 1 ratio you could definitely then you're looking at 23 $24 25 they're all like minors but these are all going to be profit taking spots and then this is all the way to 30. Of course, 30 is an, a big whole number. So that's another spot where they're going to be taking profit. It's also 100% from if you entered at the 15 mark, which is like around this area here that people probably bought close to that 15 mark. So that's another 100%. Yeah, man. So 20 is where I'm looking at to enter. Your targets are going to be, if, if you're currently in a trade, I don't know where your entry is at. What's your entry, Chipmunk? Because 25 is probably the next uh, big area that you're, you'll be looking at. And then I'd be aiming for 30 after that. But where, where was your entry? Enter today at 23. Yeah, I mean 23 is a is a minor support. So you know, right here it shows that there's definitely buyers there. I just don't like how wide this is. You know what I mean? So you have to be careful. If you enter at 23, you could probably have a stop under 2180, and you might be all right. You want to hit at least around 25 ish you could hit 30 but look at this huge wide thing like that's the thing like it went literally from 20 to 30 and it just dropped so because it, it was such a big move 
it could drop back down to test 20 again so that's why i'm i'm not looking to enter at 23 if you're already in it i mean you're already in profit even though it might be small um you just set a stop what's what's this number here 2222 so there's this also an area you can set a stop under which was yesterday's low so maybe set a stop under 2222 it has uh it's under yesterday's low and it has a 20 day moving average So that's giving you uh, about an 80 cent um, risk for a $2 reward. So that, that's a pretty good risk reward. <clears throat> looking, you'll, you'll be looking to hit $25 will be your exit. I would take profit on 24, honestly. I'll take some profits at 24, profits at 25, and then let the rest ride to see if I can hit 30. 30 is basically your, your moonshot. That's pretty much it for that one. You got any questions on that? It, it, it does have a very, very solid, you know, higher, high, higher lows going all the way up. And it's been, it's been pretty healthy, just bouncing on that 20 day moving average. Except here, this is where it broke it, went back up and it looks like it might be coming back down to test it again. The important part is not always looking it's not always about your entry like obviously your entry is what makes the difference as far as how much profit you can make that that's what the end that's where the entry starts to matter so in the beginning the entry is not as important as your trading plan your trading plan is the most the single most important thing you can do if you don't have a trading plan you can't be profitable if you're if you have a trading plan and, and if you're even making bad entries as long as you're consistently following your trading plan you can still be profitable you just won't be that profitable does that make sense you'll be more like a in the break even to you know barely profitable area so you could just by having a trading plan you could you won't go broke though you'll never go broke so you'll you'll be break even to some profits you know um which is great you know when you when you're when you're starting <clears throat> that's a great zone to be in um what then what what when that gap comes in between you know the the difference between someone who's very very profitable and someone who's just break even to barely profitable then comes in you know the entry and the more the more you know intricate details but uh, but yeah, the trading plan is the, mo the most important thing. So as long as you're approaching it with the trading plan every time, um, you're fine. Just just work on adding your you know that those perfect entries. And no entry is ever is ever going to be perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect entry. Yeah, man. Simple is simple is the best way to approach this. I see a lot of a lot of people like to to overcomplicate it, just because it looks a lot cooler, I guess. Um, also, the guru gurus or whatever, they like to make it seem way more complicated than it is, so that they can sell you a you know ten thousand dollar course or whatever. So, what's up, guys? You guys made it to the end of the video. Appreciate you guys if you made it all the way through, man. Thank you again. Uh, this is it for the video. We will be back with another live stream and market analysis in a few days. Thank you again. Remember to like, subscribe, and leave your answer in the comments for the question of the day for a chance to win that free membership. Let's go.